Right now, I wish that the Lord would come and he would say, Mark the Ward, get out, and out would come this person that I really want to be. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to dance, I tell you. What's it going to be like when we're in the presence of the Lord? Isn't it going to be just an amazing day? Thanks be to him. Thanks for coming this morning. It's our joy and our privilege to have you. And thinking about that last song, right? Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Uh, think on this passage of Scripture just for a moment with me. So Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 14. Are there any among the false gods of the nations that can bring rain? The answer is? <laughs> um, the answer is? <laughs> Are there any among the false gods that can open up the heavens and give showers? No. Are you not he, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you because you can do all things. Rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the heavens, for again proclaiming the fact that you are the creator and you are the maker and you are the good one who sends. And we're just so delighted again for the privilege of worshiping. I think every person that's on this membership role should have been here this morning just worshiping and giving thanks for one inch and three tenths. I'm sorry, people in Hurley, but also sorry for the people in Brandon with seven inches of rain. But, uh, wow, we needed it, and God gave. Thanks be to him. If you're a guest with us this morning, certainly trust that you'll be able to sense the joy that's uh, ours as a church in worshiping together, in uh, loving the Lord, and uh, just doing outreach. And so if you're a guest, take a Pew Connection card, if you would. Just let us know that you're here or how we can stay in contact. And those of you watching online, Facebook, good morning, and uh, YouTube later. Just send us an email on the website at the end of the program. So thanks for that, too. All right, what do we have? We're here gathered together because the Lord is in this place, right? Isn't it the psalmist who says, where can I go? If I go to the highest heavens, you're there. If I go to the lowest depths of the earth, you're there. We recognize, oh, we come to this place. It's a special place, but the Lord isn't coming for the stained glass windows. He's not coming for the bricks when he comes. He's coming for you, the church, right? Us, gathered together, the bride of Christ, what a joy that is. But we come together to recognize that we're, we're, we're like coals in the fire, helping the flames to uh, just to increase, in helping one another to have faith, letting one another be blessed as we recognize that we are in this journey together of faith. So thanks again for being here. Thanks for returning. There are folks, uh, I mean, I have to picture this in my mind this morning, isn't Al Abbas too old to sit on a Harley hog and go to Sturgis? <laughs> so Al and Deb are there, and Steve and Sheila, I mean, and others, and you just kind of go, wow, that's a big thing. We'll pray for them afterwards. I want to see, Har I, I, seriously, this is my hope. I want to see Harvey and Vera on a hog. <laughs> oh, that'd be a joy, yeah. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. Again, we're gathered in his presence. The Spirit of God is here as he helps us to look at Jesus. But grace and peace be to you in abundance, for it comes to us from God our Father who loves us and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Would you pray with me one slide as we worship together? Ready? Oh, let the name of the Lord be praised. Great God. You have been generous and marvelously kind. Give us such wonder, love, and gratitude that we may sing praises to you and joyfully honor your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. If you would, say a good morning to somebody in Danish, Norwegian, some German, but uh, greet one another in the Lord's name. Would you do that right now?
How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity seated team you're going to stay up there we're going to do the chorus right at the uh, uh, standing and with the standing I'm going to do that but did you sense the spirit of the living God there oh what would you say if somebody asked you so why are you here why did you sing that song do you believe it what do you believe 
I'm grateful again for this, this building, hear me. Can you and I not say something like, this is a reminder for me. You know what? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and of earth. And I believe in his son, Jesus Christ, born in a manger, born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified and he died. They, they, they laid him in a tomb. He was really dead. But the power of the living God, he didn't stay dead. Rather, he rose again from the dead, and on the third day, <laughs> wow, he ultimately ended up going to the Father. Do you believe these things? Yes, I do. I believe them because the Holy Spirit is very real. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in, in you guys, the communion of saints, not only here, but in Taiwan and in Denmark and all over the world. I believe that I get to sing that song and that I can say with absolute passion, there will be a day when I'll stand before him because I believe in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of my body. God doesn't make junk as, as, as pitiful sometimes as we think of ourselves. God says, I love you so much. I created you in my image. I love you so much. I'll send my son to die for you. Do you believe this good news? Because if you do, you'll have life everlasting. And that's what I believe. Do you believe it? Whew. There will be a day. Let's see. Team, can we pick it up right here? Can we do that? There will be a day. you. We long for the day, along with the whole church, those last words in the book of Revelation, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Oh, that uh, you would again help us to know of your presence in the midst of the trials and tribulations of this world now, but also to know of the joy that's coming. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to make sure that if you're watching or if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus. Dwight L. Moody said this, right? For the person who does not have Jesus, it's like they're living in the night and going to sleep and it's done and there's an eternal separation from God. But if you're a believer, if you're a follower in Jesus Christ, you might be living in the night of today, but you look for joy to the glory of the morning when you'll wake up and you'll be with him forever. Oh, that you would know Jesus. If you have any questions about how and why and stuff, talk to people who you sit around. Give me a shout here or have coffee with me. I'd love it. But... Uh, Whew, eternity hangs in the balance, and I just wanted you to know that again today. Thanks be to God. There will be a day when death will be no more. Flowers from Mason's funeral yesterday. 
the funeral yesterday, death happened Monday evening. Our thanks, again, in the midst of death, we are not as people who have no hope. We're grateful. We're grateful that there were people right there who came alongside, who assisted. We're grateful for the fire department, for those first responders. Continue to give God thanks, but make sure that we also pray for them. There are probably images and things that, ah, uh, there's a struggle. And so we want to continue to rejoice as well as to pray. Some things just to be sure before we move into prayer time. So next week, Sunday, please don't show up here. We'll have a sign on the door saying, come to Parker. If you do come at 930, you got lots of time. You can drive five miles an hour and still get to the service for 11 o'clock. So just letting you know. Uh, let's see, uh, James, Henry, and Jen, you can tell Richard he can ride his bike all the way. <laughs> oh, but uh, bring a lawn chair. There are some there, but uh, you want comfort, not plastic. So I'm just alerting you to that, and uh, we'll have coffee ready. We've invited the, the folks over from Calvary Reform to come and join us if they want to. They're still having their morning service, but uh, we just said come and join us if you can. So uh, Dennis uh, Inan, again, continues to receive uh, uh, medications, oral medications, as he fights his acute leukemia. And uh, this coming week, he has his consultation at there. Jim is here this morning. Thanks be to God for that. And uh, continued uh, improving as he's now on uh, antibiotics as well for infection. Virgil and Joy Clock, I talked with Virgil yesterday, he's going stir crazy, they're all quarantined to the rooms, the meals are brought to the room and all that kind of stuff uh, as uh, some people inside that trail ridge have uh, contracted positive for COVID, so uh, let's continue to keep them in prayer as well. Pray for Jennifer, for Kathy, uh, Daryl Smith. Uh, Kathy Stever talked with her yesterday, and uh, she said that this last procedure, they feel that they got all of the infection in there, but she is completely bedridden. So if you text her, uh, again, just look on Breeze for her number, otherwise give me a shout and I'll tell you what it is. But you can text her, and then she just talks back, and it'll always say, Siri delivered. And, uh, but anyway, you can have whole conversations with her, and that would bring, I think, much joy to her, so do that. The bikers and Sturgis... Uh, yeah, I want to pray that Al Abbas continues to display his love for the Lord with all those bikers, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's uh, just a joy. So I wanted to tell the people that came from Michigan, that's their truck and trailer there. I wanted them to park on Brad's spot, but I, I, again, did the Christian thing and had to move over just a little bit so you could still park there. That's how that goes. George. George is having some uh, uh, short-term memory loss kinds of issues and, uh, yeah, gets off on the wrong floor the odd time when he needs to go for supper and stuff. And so this past week, they uh, moved him uh, into a short-term memory care kind of a place, still there at uh, Grand Living. And what I'll do is I'll give you the uh, email, or sorry, the uh, ma mailing address, his number and all that kind of stuff, and the email that'll come out this afternoon. So more on that there. And Luetta just called to say that she was home as of Friday, and that's good. She'll have uh, home, uh, home health come and change the, the bandages on her wounds, as well as therapy people coming in to help her stay active. So grateful to God for those things. And then, of course, Taiwan made the news. Our daughter did a Bible study yesterday for a group of Taiwanese folks, and uh, ultimately she ended up saying, oh, by the way, my dad's a pastor in a church in America, and he's going to pray for you. The pressure's on, right? Uh, but uh, they sent us a map of Taiwan and showed us all of the spots where the missiles were literally landing about 12 miles off into the ocean, and uh, yeah, China is rattling the saber. And so we said that we would pray for both Taiwan as well as for the church that's there. So those are the kinds of things that are there. You have things. Joyce, uh, a new car, a Subaru. Wow, we've recognized that, Tori. I saw that. Thanks. <laughs> um, there's a garden produce that's there on the back table. Thanks for that. There's just Good, good things. Uh, anniversaries coming up. I think we have three this coming week. It just seems July and August, you might as well just get married all the time, over and over again, you know. So, But if you're ready, let's come to the Lord. 
in worship, in supplication, in praise. Let's pray. And so as we gather in this place this morning, God, we give you thanks that our hearts can beat with joy, no matter what it is that we carried as we came in, and, and, and we recognize that there's no shame in, in bearing grief. There's no shame in saying, God, we're sad over a relationship that seems to have gone awry. There's no shame in saying, God, we have a need. In fact, you delight in our saying those things. Just like our text for the morning will, will tell us over and over again, where do we go when we have these joys? Where do we go when we have a, a need? Thanks be to God that we can cry out to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're mindful of the Jacobson family. We're mindful of the Carlson family. The people that live in our vicinity. We're mindful of the, the sadness of a, a spouse who has gone before us. We're mindful of folks that have filed divorce papers and the pain of, of, of separation and family and kids and Wow. But yet at the same time, we delight in the fact that we got to work with sheep this past week. We got to return from a vacation in Colorado. We, we, we got to make plans to go on vacation to Sturgis, whatever it might be. We got to say again, God, thank you for this church that sends cards and letters and prayers and texts, it provides meals, just shows the love of Christ lives into that, that truth, the passage. If you give a cup of cold water in my name, you do it to me, says Jesus. God, we love doing things that bring honor and glory to you and that help those in need. And so those who also give themselves to helping others in need, we thank you that the volunteer fire department here in Chancellor had a meeting on Monday night and that they were on that scene of that accident so quickly. Pray for the neighbors who assisted. We, uh, we recognize again the hole that is left when relationships change. And so we come and we say again to you, God, would you be merciful to me? God, would you be merciful to us? And we give you thanks that we don't grieve as people who have no hope because we can sing that there will be a day and we long for it. But uh, we also know that we want to be heavenly minded, but we want to continue as long as you would tarry, as long as you allow us to live, we want to be earthly good. So help us as a church as we seek to not only be a blessing here in our community, but to be a church that is part of the bride in the world. And today, this morning, we join the church in Taiwan. We give you thanks that as we're waking up and going into this day, they're just retiring and getting ready for their Monday. God, strengthen the hearts of those believers, we pray. There's all kinds of thoughts that are going in our hearts and minds, and we wonder about them. We didn't think Russia would do what they did to Ukraine. We don't believe China will do, and yet, Lord, who knows? We recognize that there is evil, and it is rampant in the world. So we come again, and we say, Lord, you are in control. Somehow the rising and the falling of nations happens. You... Uh, you know that. You allow in your will some of those things to happen. And while we can't fathom the mystery fully here, one day we will stand before you and we will say, Holy is the Lord. 
Strengthen the hearts of those in Taiwan. Lord, let it be that, like Kathy played that song, Revive Us Again, let it be that revival would come to the church in Taiwan, that they would have that sense of urgency, recognizing that there is this red dragon on the mainland. So help them to be much more bold in sharing the good news of Jesus. Let them be the hands and feet of Jesus to, uh, yeah, to a country that, that has so many gods, false gods, whom they worship. Break them free from those things, we pray, and let them serve the living God. So thanks again for this morning. Thanks for babies. Thanks for adults. Thanks for older, chronologically gifted folks. Thanks that we're a church that truly believes those things in Scripture. We stand on the truth of your love, your grace, and your goodness. And all this we pray in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Thanks, people of God. If you're a kid, I'd love for you to come on up. We're going to start by sitting on the pew, but then we'll get off. So if you're young at heart, would you come down, please? Come down, and I'm going to ask Amy to come on up at the same time. So as kids come, uh, you can sit right here. Emma, Troy, come on up. Here we go. McKinley, thank you for coming. Such a beautiful dress. Did your dad pick that out for you? Oh, nope. <laughs> So we've got Operation Christmas Child still going. We had that hymn sing, which was a wonderful thing. Um, and uh, my thanks to the women of purpose. Good morning, hearty boys. Woo oh, good morning, we're smart boys. Come on, give me that. Oh, yeah. All right, is there enough room? So, yeah, we'll move one over. There you go. Once you're sitting down, uh, that's all right. Just find this little spot. You can sit right on the floor if you want to as well, because we'll get there. Oh, good. Sit on the floor, and then we'll have you stand up in just a moment, all right? Just uh, thanks to the ladies. Thanks for your offerings, by the way, on going. And uh, Amy, tell us a little bit about how can we help. Well, I have my notes here this morning because everybody else chickened out coming up here. <laughs> so Tuesday at 5 o'clock, we are going to clean the beef booth. So if you are available to help with that, just meet us at the beef booth. At, on next Sunday at 2 o'clock, we're going to season the meat, and so we need about eight people to do that. So if you are able to help with that, talk to Dave Smith. Um, you do get a free meal if you help out, and so that's just to kind of encourage you to come and help. We need still corn shuckers, and we have availables, I think, for every spot yet. And so I just kind of want to talk about, if you volunteer, we do have where you can come and you can sit. It's not that you have to stand the entire three hours. Um, it's a good social event. It's a lot of talking and getting to see people. And so if you have any questions, I just encourage you to talk to Dave Smith, Terry Wildryer, Melanie Clock, or myself. Um, it's just the fundraisers that we make it goes to local missions around the area. Um, it kind of pays for the banquet when we do the banquet. Um, kids as camps, anything. Operation Christmas Child. And so we just really encourage you, if you have never helped out, it is something to do. And so just please don't be hesitant to help out, but talk to one of us. Let's hear it for the beep booth. Yes, thank you, Amy. <laughs> Woo. All right. That's, oh yeah. Uh, don't forget that we have children's bulletins. So that's the one that's for today. They're on the back table. If you didn't get one, you can get one. But it deals with our story for today about naming, all right? So before, let's see, I think, oh, one more thing. Right after the service, you can either do it today or in two Sundays from now. So if you have to go right after the service today, there's still another time. But you can do the scavenger hunt down in the book nook, down in the library. Miss Kathy, Miss Gail, Miss Wanda, they're all going to be there. And we're just delighted that you guys can go on a scavenger hunt, all right? Who's ever done one before? Oh, good. Oh, old hat. Well, this is a good one, so I'm there. All right, let's see. Children's moment. Who has played this game before? Called? Simon Says. All right, good. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody stand up. Just kind of get some spot. Give yourself a little bit of room so you don't hit the person beside you. Good, good. Give yourself a little space. Yep, there you go. All right, ready? Simon says, touch your ear. 
touch your nose. Ah, 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 I didn't say Simon Says. I can't believe it. Are you guys sleeping already? You can take your hand down off your ear. Rather than play Simon Says, I'm thinking today we're going to play a game called Elisha Says. Elisha was a prophet. That's, he's in our story today from the Bible. And he is going to do some talking to somebody. So I'd like to play the game called Elisha Says, all right? So Elisha says, stand on one leg. Good. Elisha says, tickle your belly. Scratch your ear. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, you guys got to listen. Uh, Elisha says, uh, flap like a chicken. Oh, some of you hadn't seen chickens before. Oh, good chicken. Oh, that's a good chicken, Tyson. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Elisha says, touch your nose seven times. <laughs> oh, good. I didn't know. Uh, it's pretty important when you play this game that you have to wait till the Elisha says, right? When Pastor Mark was a little boy, and I'm not saying you should use this word, but when I was a little boy, we often thought that some people were dumb, like uh, not very smart. And so we, we, we used that bad word and we said, oh, they're so dumb. But today, I want to ask you if you would eat a dumb dumb because you're so smart. And I'm going to give you all a dum-dum, and here's what I'm going to ask you to do with it, is you can eat it carefully, but no garbage in the pews. Give it to your dad, put, have him put it in his pocket, all right? And you can eat the dum-dum, and remember, as you're eating it, you're going to say, I want to be smart, and just like Elisha says, I follow his words. When I say God says, I'm going to follow his word. Listen in the sermon, and then guess what? Oh, one other thing. Elisha says, today we have to have two children's sermons. So right at the end, get ready. I'll call you up again. Ready? Go. Oh, and here come the hordes. Whoa, just take one. Just oh, Easy, easy. There we go. Yep, easy. Once you take one, you can go back to mom and dad. There we go. Let's. Oh, you know what? We'll do girls. Oh, yes, sorry, girls. Here we go. Thanks, Heath. Girls first, yes, go ahead, you may take one there, okay, the rest, oh, here comes Ashley, got one, good, see you, got one, everybody, thank you, oh yes, take one, oh yeah, thank you, good job, yeah, you got one, all right. Talk about things that change, right, just using the word D-U-M-B, can't use that anymore. All kinds of words, but the principle is still true. I don't want to be dumb. I want to be smart in the things of God, right? Take your Bibles, if you would, and uh, just hold them in your hand. We're going to turn again. We're doing this series for the summer from Second Kings, First and Second Kings. We've done, what, about four or five already. And as you hold that Bible, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. So God's people together, right? For this, your word, we give you thanks, O God. We believe that this word is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training unto righteousness. Through the working of your Holy Spirit, this word will transform us. Thank you for your word, O God. Amen and amen. Thanks be to the Lord. So the text for this morning, I think, has appeared in almost every Sunday school curriculum. doesn't make a difference if you use uh, Baptist, Holman, uh, Christian Reformed Church Faith Publications, David C. Cook, uh, Light, uh, Answers in Genesis. This particular story is in most every Sunday school curriculum. It's been used over and over again, year after year, in a variety of vacation Bible schools. And it seems that the story that we're going to do in two parts... Um, uh, kind of declares the greatness of God and the fact that He can do miracles. And, and there's truth to all of that. There is truth to all of that. 
There's all kinds of things. As I looked at the story, I started reading it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, trying to read again, just over and over again, let the word just kind of saturate you. And you start going, uh, how, how do I remember some of these things? What, what can I do by way of the word? And here's something that I just started. So on Tuesday, I said, oh, I see that the, the word Syria is in there. I see that there's a soldier. And I, as I read through, I finally came up with this list by last night of ways that I could remember the first 15 verses just of our text. Kind of interesting. Hmm. Lord, help us to see some of these. But let's go to the text if we can. So, 1 Kings, what I'm going to do is read a portion of it, stop, preach, read a portion, stop, preach. So let's do that together. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor. Let's pause there. So Naaman, as far as I know, in 30 plus years I've been doing ministry, I have never met a person with the first name or middle name of Naaman. I know what it means. It means gracious. Gracious. Did his parents call him? I don't know. So here's Naaman. He's captain of the army. Some of your translations say Aram. Some of your translations say Syria. So where is that? Well, you'll remember Aram, that's a name that comes to our mind, right? Remember way back in the book of Genesis, there was Noah. Noah had three sons. One of them was Seth. Seth had a son named Aram. Oh. Ultimately, the Arameans or the Syrians, where today Syria would be, developed a kind of a hate relationship with Israel. They were their enemies. So here's Naaman, who is from Aram, Syria, the commander of the army. Why are we having a story in the Bible about people who are enemies of Israel? What's God doing by, he was a great man, because the Lord had given victory to... What's the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, what's Jehovah doing by helping somebody who serves a foreign God? Next week at the fair, we're going to see that he serves a God named Rimmon. What's God doing helping this guy? Well, maybe it's because he's such a nice guy. <laughs> right? He's the commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was a great man. He was an honorable man. He was a respected man. Uh, he was well-loved. He's loved by his wife. He's loved by his servants, as we'll see as we get towards the end of the sermon. Uh, the guy was just Mr. Nice Guy. Good reputation, big responsibility, and he was a winner. God had given victory to Syria. Wow. He was a man of valor. He was a man who had charisma. He was a guy that was worth following, and people loved him. Highly respected because the Lord had given victory. We got to pause there and just kind of, how does this stuff work? When you go like to a gospel where Jesus is teaching, right? Let's go to the greatest sermon that was ever preached, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. When we're at Matthew 5, around verse 43, 44, Jesus is talking and he says, oh, by the way, I just want to let you know, it rains on the just and the unjust. God is always willing and he is always able to help those who have not yet come to him and those who have. 
Isn't that gracious of God? I mean, just that piece alone just says, wow, I don't deserve any of these things. God gives to him character. God gives to him this, this, this sense of honor, this sense of valor. God gives to him winning ways. What a gracious God. Huh. If God wants to do that on the unjust and for the unjust, there's got to be reasons for it. I don't understand them all, but I recognize because we know this story, something happens as God gives victory over victory. This guy had it all, except he was a leper. Now, some of your translations have a little asterisk in there, and it says something like uh, skin disease. Uh, whatever skin disease it might have been, there were various ones of them, but most uh, would say leprosy, right? Leprosy is uh, it's a disease that disfigures you. It, it's not wonderful to look at. It, uh, it affects the perimeters of your body. It actually can cause you to lose some appendages, fingers and toes. Leprosy in this day is terminal. I remember the very first time that I was encountering leprosy, and it was in this famous movie, Ben-Hur. You know, the one with Charlton Heston way back when. And Charlton Heston, he won this race, this horse race, and Marcellus, the guy he's racing against, at the very end, right before he dies, he just wants to drive this spear home into, into Charlton Heston, to Ben Hearn. He says, oh, by the way, your mother and sister are still alive, and they have leprosy. So he goes looking for him. He goes down to the Valley of the Lepers, and there he is hiding behind a rock as Miriam, his sister, starts talking to the mother and sister, Right? And here's another picture of that picture. Leprosy. It would cause death. So all these things, all so nice, you got everything going for you, but he's a leper. It makes me say again to myself, you're a great people. You've got all kinds of things going for you, but in one hand, all of us also suffer from not leprosy, but sin. We all need somebody to help us, don't we? So the Syrians on one of their raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel. What? God's helping him to win. As they go to battle against Israel, they capture them, they take some slaves, and it just so happens that this little girl ends up working in the home of Naaman and his wife. As you and I look at this chapter, by the way, you know what I'm struck by? Naaman has a name, his wife doesn't, the servant doesn't. Uh, you've got uh, the main character of the story. There's a man. You've got the main character of the story, I think, a little slave girl. You've got uh, a guy who worships the wrong god, Rimen, and you've got a little girl who worships the right god, Jehovah. We don't know who the girl is. It doesn't tell us about her family, her pedigree, or anything else. It doesn't even tell us that she knows the name of the prophet that she's going to talk about. The Syrians and one of the raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel, and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. And she said to Naaman's wife, Would it be that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy? Folks, as far as I can tell, while there are some stories of leprosy, there's no story of uh, Elisha curing anybody in terms of leprosy? Does she even know his name? He's in Samaria. He's in the northern part. Would it be that he, the prophet, would cure him of his leprosy? Can we park here just for a moment again? Let the text breathe. Let it speak out to you and me. 
Here you are, a little girl. Let's, let's say that she's 10 years old. Let's just make it up, right? 10 years old. In come these, these, these horrible soldiers. They come, they take you away. Perhaps they kill your parents or they destroy your village, but you're carried over, and now you got to work for the guy who's in charge of that whole army that did that to your family. Put yourself into that little girl's kind of shoes now and say, would you open up your mouth? Would you say anything about what's happened in your, 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 your land, about your God, to, to people who killed, who took, who... I mean, you got a bone to pick with somebody. She's working in the house of the guy. But she doesn't let that bother her somehow. Oh, and again, I can't say it never did. Somehow she puts that to the side. And, and in her faith, in, in the little bit that she has, she says, I think that my master can get help. He has to go see somebody. Wow. Another question for us then. When do you talk about people coming to see God? When do you talk about your faith? Do you have to wait till all the conditions are right? Do you play the game and say, I'll talk about it later? Or can we, like this servant girl, realize that there are opportunities always, no matter what the conditions, to say, oh, you should come to see God. So she shares that. The wife believes it. Again, she's a, a worshiper of a false god, but there's something in her that gives her hope. People need to have hope. That's why they need to hear from us, Chancellor Reformed Church, about the good news of Jesus. Somehow the wife has this hope. She goes and talks to her husband, and what does her husband do? It amazes me. Let's keep going, right? So Naaman went in and told his Lord. The wife tells the husband. The husband goes to the king. Thus and so spoke the girl from the land. She said that she knows somebody who can cure us from leprosy. And so the king of Syria said, Go now, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. This king must really have liked Naaman. And I know that because in the next few verses. So Naaman went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, ten changes of clothing. Stop right there. If you figured that out roughly in today's, and again, uh, what was a shekel? There's a shekel that is an Egyptian shekel. There's a Hebrew shekel. There's a Roman shekel. They vary in weight. Bottom line is, put all the stuff together, and you're talking about three million bucks. You think that's enough? <laughs> in one hand, it is. Can I tell you, though, why is it that people are looking to buy a miracle? You don't need to bring anything other than a heart that's penitent and humble to say, God, I need help. But this guy takes it all. The king gives it to him. The king must really love him to give him three million bucks to say, oh, by the way, here's a letter of recommendation. You only write letters of recommendation to people who you know. And he writes a letter to the king of Israel, and he says, oh, by the way, I'm sending you this guy, and here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like you to cure him of leprosy, please. The king of Israel, as the story goes, right? When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes. He goes, I can't believe it. This must be some kind of a false letter. He's setting us up. He's going to attack us, I know. I can't heal this guy from leprosy. What's this king of Syria thinking he's doing? And I stop again, and I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. We've been in this series in First and Second Kings a few times. What are kings supposed to do? Kings are supposed to make sure that the people that they reign over love God. Kings are the ones who are supposed to lead them into the presence, right? To make sure that they offer their sacrifices and worship and all that stuff. What's this king doing getting so bent out of shape? Why isn't his first word, let's take this to the Lord in prayer? No. Nah. God's at work. Verse Eight, Elisha, the man of God, when he heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he said, why are you doing that? Send Naaman to me. 
So here comes this big entourage. Uh, I don't see Elisha living in some sort of a palace. Uh, I, I kind of think about it being a bit of a hovel, uh, kind of like, you know, the Lord of the Rings, the Middle Earth, and that sort of a thing. And here comes Naaman. The guy's carrying three million. Uh, as we get to the story next week, two guys have to carry some of this stuff. <laughs> You've got this whole entourage, his horses and his chariots, only really important people, by the way, ride chariots. Everybody else walks. <laughs> so here he is in all of his pomp and circumstance. He's a somebody, remember? Chapter 5, verse 1. He's well-respected. He's a man of valor, a man of honor. The king loves him. He's a good commander. And here he comes, and he comes to Elisha's house. Verse 10, and Elisha sent the messengers to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times, your flesh will be restored and you shall be clean. Here's the rest of the story. In enters Naaman, stands outside the door. His expectation I'm going to meet this man who somehow is going to wave his wand or he's going to go poof or abracadabra, whatever it is that he does, because Naaman doesn't know. Uh, I expect to stand in front of this man and he's going to wave his wand and I'm going to be healed. And um, I'm going to give him all of this stuff. He'll be happy. I'll be happy. I'll go home and live life. Here's Elisha, Gehazi, my servant. Uh, I know he's out there. Here's what I want you to say. Yes, Elisha, Gehazi, closes the door, stands in front of Naaman. Um, my master says, go into the Jordan River, dip seven times. Doesn't this Elisha guy know who I am? I'm Naaman, commander, valor. I'm a winner. You don't even have the guts to come out and to talk to me or the decency or the protocol. You send some no-name guy out to talk to me? He's got a lot of pride in his heart. And then... Not only does he send out this messenger guy, but he tells me to go and dip in the Jordan River where everybody bathes, where the animals go poop, where the fish come out of. Uh, and it's, it's, it's such a small little thing. Have you seen the Jordan River? Sometimes it's like a creek. It's, 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 it's about the size of the Vermilion River. Man, I've got two rivers back at home that are clean and running water. It's like Niagara Falls. It's, it's, it's fresh. I should have stayed home. Ah! And he leaves. And he's angry. And he's bitter. But he's liked. He's liked. Knowing who he is and the, the position, the title that he holds, can you imagine some servants probably putting their neck on the line? They've been with him. They know him. Perhaps they've served military duty with him. I don't know. But ultimately, uh, 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 Naaman, uh, uh, sir, maybe he cooled off a little. I don't know. But as the story unfolds, uh, Naaman, th think about this. If the guy had asked you to, to, to jump off of Niagara Falls in order to be healed, you probably would have. If he would have asked you to, to, to ride bareback into battle with uh, 10,000 troops all around, but that was going to, 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 to settle the issue of your leprosy, you would have done it. If he would have asked you to do anything grand, you would have done it, wouldn't you? So why not do this little simple thing? Go and dip in the river. I'm glad that the story tells us that a servant girl talked to a wife who heard, the wife talked to a husband who heard, the husband talked to a king who heard, and this commander goes and hears, and then he hears again from the servants, and he listens. 
And what's the result? Now, seven times, you and I know seven is the number of perfection. Is there a magical thing about seven? I don't know. Why didn't God say three or six? Can we role play just a little again? I want to be careful. I'm not loose with the text. But just think about this for a moment, right? So here I'm Naaman. I'm still angry that he told me to go dip in this river, that he didn't meet me, all that kind of stuff. Oh! Why seven times? So the first time I get in there and I splash around and do this, and all of a sudden, what's at stake here? My pride. I'm a leper. I'm standing in front of these soldiers that I brought, in front of these servants that I brought. I'm ticked off at this guy and his words. Doesn't your pride have to start to say, I'm sorry. Sorry I got angry. Sorry. And he gets up and he goes back down under her the second time. What's he dealing with? Here's the guy who wins every battle. He goes down. Is he afraid? Is he thinking, what happens when I, when I get up? And, and, and what happens if after seven times nothing's happened? How do I face people? What am I going to do? The third time he goes down, is he doubting? The fourth time and the fifth. I don't know why God gave him seven times to do it. I'm thinking, though, it wasn't one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as fast as you could go. I'm, 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 I'm just sensing this. Something is happening to him. Something that's changing him from the inside out. Every time he comes up, it's kind of like he's been washed from fear and from despair and from pride and from leprosy. So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored. How old is this guy? Name him? I don't know. Make him 30, 35. Do 35-year-olds have skin like babies? <laughs> God did something more. He did, just didn't restore Naaman's skin to what it was at 35 years age. He made it like the flesh of a baby. Like, like a baby's butt, right? Nice and soft. You put a little powder on it. This guy, is, is he squeaky clean? One more verse. And he returns to the man of God. Say what? <laughs> I'm so angry. The guy sent his messenger, and that's how he talks to me, and he treats me not like the position that I hold. Tell me something didn't happen as he's dipping seven times in the Jordan River because now he wants to go back to talk to the guy who didn't even come to talk to him. I'm thinking there's a heart change. He and all of his company. And he said, Behold, I know now that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. <sighs> Leprosy of the skin had been healed, but I'm thinking the Lord was dealing with some leprosy in his heart, too. He had a disease, didn't he? Kids, are you ready? McKinley, did I say two children's stories? Come, let's go. Kids, come on up. I made a promise. When you make a promise, you don't break a promise because you'll find it doesn't pay. Come on, kids. Here we go. Thanks, Heath. Lead the way. Ashley, all the way from North Dakota. Oh, good job. Nona. Oh, I got to ask. Finley, did, did, did it go okay when you were in the hot air balloon? I hope. Are we ready? Come on up. Good job. You can sit in the second pew if you want to. Otherwise, right on the ground. On the ground's good. There you go. Thanks, guys. All right. So can I share her? I want to share a really sad story. Oh, it makes me cry just thinking about it. Oh. Oh. Pastor Mark, yesterday, 
I went to the cupboard to see if there were some cookies there. And I looked in the pantry because Miss Kathy always has cookies and there were none there. So I thought, oh, Miss Kathy, she had the grandkids over to our house, so I'm sure that there's some ice cream. So I went downstairs, and I thought I could get the ice cream pail out of the freezer, and I could just kind of have my snack on Saturday, and oh, there was no ice cream. So I went back upstairs to the kitchen, and I went to the pantry, and I looked, and I found a box, vanilla instant pudding. And I said, oh, I don't know how to bake. I don't know what to do. And I looked at the box, and, and this is what the box said. Whisk together pudding with two cups of milk. So put this in a bowl, two cups of milk, and whisk it. In five minutes, you can eat it. Two instructions, two. Put it in a bowl with milk and wait five minutes and eat it. Oh. Uh, do you remember the instructions? What am I supposed to do? Finley? Yeah. Two things. Put in a bowl with milk. Wait five minutes. Is that pretty easy to do? <laughs> even Pastor Mark, who, who can't even boil water, knows how to do this. It's amazing. So here's the instructions. There was a guy named Naaman, and when he went to Elisha, Elisha said, it's so simple. This is what you can do. Just go to the Jordan River and dip seven times. Uh, how hard is that? It's the simplest thing ever. Jesus, he gave two instructions. You know what he said? Two things I want you to do. One, love God. Two, love people. <laughs> Put it in a bowl with milk. Wait five minutes and eat it. Love God. Love people. Do you think that you and I could take Jesus at his word and do what we said we want to do? God, I want to love you more. People, I'm going to keep loving you. Ooh, ooh, so easy to do. That's what Elisha asked Naaman to do. Do something simple. Don't make it harder. Just do it. And now because of that, I'm thinking on your way back while the praise team comes on up, I want, we'll start with all the people in the row. You guys stay there. Come and take three and head back. Take three Tootsie Rolls. There you go. Oh, it's amazing. It's that simple and easy to do. Look at that. Perfect job. Oh, you can't? Oh, you're allergic. Uh, how do I make it up to you? I'll make it up to you. We'll talk right after coffee break. I'm sorry about that, buddy. I've got to remember that. Oh, don't stick them behind your ear. Don't put them up your nose. These are candies. There you go. You're welcome. Heath, can I just give that to you to hold for a second? Here you go. Come get some. Yep, you guys go past. Heath's got them. There we go. Where's my little clicker? I got to make sure. Folks, it's that easy, right? The Lord wants to bless Naaman. He wants ultimately to work through whatever circumstances there are for him to be able to say help. And God shows up. Thanks, man. God wants to bless. It's this simple. Why do we make, what is the will of God? If I stand like this, if I pray for 15 hours every day, if I do, blah, blah, blah. folks, the Lord wants to bless you. All he's asking you to do is love him, love people. Let's stand and sing together. Yes to you. 
that word amen what are you amening what are you saying god let it be so let it be so god that i would know that you are for me he is thanks again for coming to this place know that the grace and the love and the fellowship of god the father god the son and god the holy spirit go with you he is for you the wheel dryers have got a special kind of a place up the fellowship hall. Get some coffees and cookies. Jackie, is today birthday day? Is today birthday? Happy birthday. There we go. We'll do that too. We'll talk to you in the fellowship hall. Brothers and sisters, go in peace.